Okay, so I'm just booting the machine, wait for it to come up, which won't be long because there's not a lot to load. As the prompt, login as normal user. And the first thing I'm going to do is to check that those modules that we built have loaded. LS mod. And you can see there that the ones with TBSEC P3 in them are the proprietary mod modules. And I believe these ones here, um, the DVB and video buff ones, are the part of the kernel itself, uh, probably the video for Linux subsystem V4L. So that looks like they've loaded OK. Um, another thing I'll do is to look at the devices and look for anything in, under DVB. And you can see there's two adapters there. Um, each one of those adapters is a software device that represents the physical aerial connection to the um, satellite dish uh, each of the, uh, I think they're called transponders, on the satellite dish. So that's looking okay. Um, we can also do dmessage to look at the kernel messages as the driver was loaded and the modules were loaded. So you can see that I've got a warning about an out of tree module tainting the, the kernel. And there's a warning there about an experimental version of the media stack. But importantly, these lines here, TBSEC P3, show the, well, that one shows the model number and the manufacturer. Um, and then these ones show each adapter being registered. So there's adapter 0, front end 0, adapter 1, front end 0. And finally, the actual hardware address on the PCI bus and the IRQ in the memory I.O. that it's using. Um, so that looks like it's all working. There are a couple of small utilities which allow you to directly test um, the tuner is working correctly and to capture the stream. There's one called DVB Scan, I think it is, which I've never used. Um, the one I do use is called W Scan, um, which I may show in a, a video. So if you're interested in that, leave me a, a comment because um, I'm more likely to do the video if I'm unsure about it or uh, I think I've got more important things to do. I probably won't do it, but if I know there's people who are interested in it, then uh, there's a more of a chance that I will actually do it. So that's looking okay. So what I'm going to do is start the GUI up and move this over here. And what we'll do is run a program called Myth TV Setup to start the actual setup program. And it says it's upgrading the Myth TV to a certain scheme of 1300 um, was the setting, uh, was the version number. So it's got the country and language to select here. It's defaulted to UK, so that is obviously been found from the locale that's been set. So all you need to do here is just to select save. You can use the keyboard tab to move between fields and enter or space, depending on what type of field it is. So it's generally easy to use the mouse. So I'll just click on save. And it shut itself down. It probably means I've got to restart it again. Yeah, okay. So now it wants to upgrade that previous version to the latest version. It's probably because 1307 is maybe the lowest version database that can be used with this version of Myth TV. So that's why it's jumped to that version. So it's defaulted to that lowest version. And now it wants to upgrade it to the current version, this version of... Myth TV uses, so we'll do upgrade. Um, so it's just saying it's going to back up the database. Well, there's nothing in the database, obviously, at the moment it's brand new. But if this was an upgrade of Myth TV, then you'd, you'd have to do this, and it would 
create a backup of the complete database in that location. So if you did want that, you'd probably want to move it out of temp um, in case it got lost. There are also other clients using this database. Well, I don't know what clients they are because nothing else is logged in. As you've seen, I've just rebooted it. Um, they should be shut down first. So that's not a problem. As I know, there's nothing else using it. So let's select the upgrade. I've just pressed enter there. Wait for that to complete. Okay, so there it is. It's come up with a main menu. Um, so we'll go into general first of all. And this is the host address backend setup. So it's probably best if there's a little arrow on the side here. You can either press a uh, click to go into it or you can press the right arrow if you're on the keyboard to move into it and it's left arrow to go up um, or back to the previous menu. If you press escape, it'll go back to the top menu and ask if you want to save and exit or to exit without saving. So for the moment, I'll just leave that as it is. Um, first thing you've got to do here is you've got to set a security pin and the default is zero 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 it allows any connections to any clients to connect if you do want to secure it with a proper pin then obviously set it to something other than zero 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 so i'm just going to press enter here type in four noughts and click ok so i'm going to press the left arrow to go back to the previous menu um, a lot of these you don't need to set just check that tv format is correct and you can see the channel frequency table is correct as well for me in europe west so that's okay. Uh, miscellaneous settings. I don't think there's a lot to do here. Yep. I think a lot of these can just be accepted as default. So I'm going to, I'll press the left arrow there. If I'd press escape, I would have got the same menu. So I'll just do save and exit. So now we go in to configure the hardware. So this capture cards is the one where we actually add in each of those adapters and tell Myth TV that they exist. So we need to click on here, new capture card. This can take a little while for it to open the card. So, yep, there you go. It's just appeared, new capture card. So I'll click on that now. Click on the right arrow. And it's come up with the, the correct card type. There are other card types. If you've got any of these, you can use them with Miss TV. But that default that's come up is correct because it's a DVBS card, so that's fine. Click on the right arrow. Uh, why isn't that taking that? Is it just the card type it wants here? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So I need to press the right arrow here. I didn't click on that properly. Oh, okay, so you do have to actually click the right arrow to move it on. Okay, by default, it's picked the first adapter. So if you remember, there's two adapters, 0 and 1. They've both got a front end 0. And it's found the delivery system is S2 for the HD um, satellite. And... The rest of the settings you can leave as defaults. There's no need to change them. Um, as I said uh, in one of the first videos, I've never used cable with Myth TV, so I don't know what settings there are for that. Um, with the terrestrial cards, you don't get this menu at the bottom here. Um, so there's no extra configuration for terrestrial broadcasts. With the satellite, at the very minimum... You need to go into this menu and select the LNB. Um, if you've got rotors, uh, you know, motors and things for positioning satellite, then these need to be set up. Um, I can't tell you anything about them because I haven't got that. But you certainly need to select the LNB. Um, and optionally, the voltages and so on as well. Because I'm in Europe, Universal, that's sufficient. There's nothing else to set. 
So I'll just press the left arrow, left arrow again, left arrow again, left arrow again, and once more back to the top. So that's the first um, tuner input, if you like. So I need to do new capture card again to create another input. So again, you've got to wait. There's always a pause while it opens the tuner. And there it is there, it's, it didn't appear, so it was off the screen. So again, press the right arrow. This time I want to select adapter one. And that's taken that. And once again, for the satellite, I need to go down to this dissect, switch LMB and rotation, rotor configuration, press enter, select the LMB, because that's the connection or the way it's picked up. The defaults are okay. So I just left arrow all the way back to the top, save and exit, and that's done. So if I go back in there, And these do take some time, these menus, for some reason. I pre presume it's probing the cards. Yep, there we go, it's come up. We can see that it's got the two different adapters with their names on there. So we know that both of these um, tuner inputs have been selected correctly. So I'll just press escape to come out of that. Uh, I'll just do save and exit, even though I don't made, didn't make any changes. Next thing goes to is recording profiles. Now there's nothing there that I actually ever change. I don't use the DVB encoders. I don't use any transcoders. Um, if you're interested in those sort of things, then yeah, you can look that up on the uh, Myth TV website. So I'm going to exit without saving. I'm not interested in that. Next thing we need to do is to set up a video source. So just press enter for new video source and give it a name. I mean, I just give it name of video source for example is sufficient um, except the default for getting the listings over air um, the channel frequency table again default um, all these are for getting the actual channels the scan can be done at this point um, and also there are other um, bits of information to put in here so um, just check my notes here Uh, sorry, connections. Oh yes, okay. So the bouquet ID um, for the UK is two seven two. So I put two seven two in there. And then the region ID is one for London. I'll probably do most people. There is a table on the Myth TV web page, I believe it is. No, sorry, on the free view, is it? Certainly, if you go to the Myth TV website, it will it will either point you in the right, or right direction or it will have the values there for the, your region of the country you're in. So, in the UK, one is good enough for London, I believe the southeast as well. So, that's all set so I'll press left arrow left arrow again save and exit now I'm going to go to input connections and select the first adapter dvbs2 is correct display name that's good enough it's input one the video source is the only video source I've got so just select that um, Quick tuning, leave that as it is. 
and if we go into scan for channels this will actually this is the part where you actually start to um, probe the uh, signal that's coming down from the satellite dish or the aerial um, to pick up services so what I want to do is tell it what sort of services I want so I want TV and radio so I'll, I'll take that could take all for example if I wanted that unencrypted only because I haven't got a cam card I think they're called to de for decrypting channels there is an option somewhere to try and use um, or check for channels that report as being encrypted um, possibly if you uncheck that no um, maybe it's on another screen um, it will try and decode the encrypted channels and if they're actually not encrypted even though reported as encrypted then obviously you'll get extra channels if that's the case um, set the logical channel numbers let's jump down complete scan data required I'll leave that as it is um, add full yeah leave these all checked add full transport stream channels oh yes there it is test decryptability so um, oh it's to check if they can be decrypted with the, uh, the cam card or the smart card so some tuner cards do come with the option of plugging in a smart card or a cam card so as it says it enabling the option increases the scan time obviously so there's the video source again it's picked up we've already set that the adapter we're going to tune in on is the first one scan type I want is um, tuned um, and enter on scan select satellite type didn't actually see that oh yes it's this one so I've pressed right arrow on full scan tune and select the satellite that I want to use so the one I'm going to use which covers the whole of the UK is this one 28.2e it's come up with a starting frequency you can put any frequency in there to tune um, but by default Myth TV just goes it tunes the one you put in and then it goes and tries every single frequency anyway so you can leave all these as is it will just take change them as it finds you know different aspects when it's tuning the different frequencies um, and then I'm going to press enter on scan and it will start scanning so I'll wait until it's actually found something um, yeah there you go it's found 12 probable channels so what I'm going to do I'm going to put the mute on wait for this to finish scanning and then carry on with the configuration
Okay, so the scan has finished. It's found 112 uh, DVB channels. So what I'm going to do here is to insert all that it found. And then it says um, these MPTS channels, you'll, you'll find as you get some conflicts, depending on what options you choose, you might want to do a scan twice when you found out what these channels are. Um, so I'm going to do OK to all. Scan complete. So I can just exit now. So I'm going to press the left arrow, save and exit. And if you remember, this was the first input, which I've called input one, or it's, it's defaulted to input one, that's fine. Go back again, and then I'm going to set up the second adapter, which is called input two. Video source, I need to select that, so it just changes to the same video source. And the rest shouldn't need touching now. We don't need to do a scan again, because the channels that are found at the scan the first time round will have been stored and will be shared between the adapters. So I'll press left arrow, left arrow again, save and exit. And then finally I'm going to go to channel editor. And you can see some of the channels it's found here. Um, and what I can do now is to, you can also scan the channels here. Um, but what I'm going to do now is to download icons. So uh, I'm going to download all because there's obviously none there at the moment. And wait for that to finish downloading. Okay, so it's downloaded 112 icons, couldn't find icons for 14 channels. So what we can do now, oh, I think it's still doing something. Yeah, so it's not found any matches for BBC Alba HD, so I'll just skip these. Shame there's not a skip all here, but I'll just have to click for each one. And you can see it's put the icons next to some of these channels now. So 
so that looks okay. So um, what I'm going to do now is to, you can delete channels from here by the way, so if that's something you want to do, or you can, um, I think you can edit them as well, change the names, and I think you can change the channel numbers as well. Um, so I'll just press escape there. Storage directories we need to go into, and we need to change the default group. So I'm going to go into that, add a new directory, and I'm going to set this to um, yeah, var myth TV uh, recordings. So this will be the default where the recordings will get. Uh, saved. So I press left arrow and is there any others I need to set here? No, I think that's it for now. Um, I think there's one other but I think I'll do that later. So save and exit and that's all I need to do, so I'll just press escape. Um, this always comes up, I have created this directory and made it right to and it still comes up with the error, so I'm not sure what else needs to be done, whether it needs to be a file or, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I, I have looked in the past, whether it's something that's been fixed, or like I said, I'm doing something wrong with it, I'm not sure. So I just... Do, do not fix because fix never seems to do anything. I could, I could try fix if it does it next time. Oh, it just takes you into the menu, right? So just accept do not fix. So what we can do now is we've set up MythTB, but we can't actually use, although we could run the front end, we wouldn't be able to do anything because the back end is not running. Um, the back end is the daemon that uh, manages his recordings and basically the interface between the database and the front end. So what we need to do is to start the back end. So I'm going to do this manually to start off with Miss TV forward slash bin Miss back end. Um, sorry, this needs to be done as root. So I'll um, run this with this form. Uh, this backend minus d log path forward slash var forward slash myth tv forward slash log and the user to use is myth tv else oh, su so put in the roots password and that's now running in the background. So I'll be able to start the front end um, as the Myth TV user. So I'll become the root. Uh, didn't need to do that, but never mind. And then become Myth TV. And uh, I'm not sure if I shouldn't have made this a system user actually. Um, anyway, uh, myth front end. Okay, yeah, I've seen this before, this error. If this happens, what I've found is if you put... Um, uh, let me check my notes. Yeah, LD underscore library path equals um, sometimes when I've built this I've never needed to do this and other times it needs to be done so I'm not sure why it is um, there's the oh, I can't remember what the paths were now is it opt stv lib is it that one No, it's not that one. It's the plugins, is it? If 
Right, forms, is it that one? Um, I can't remember what it is now. Sorry, not, uh, it's not Myth TV, it's QT5 forward slash lib. No, it is the platforms one then. So, plugins, platforms. Oh, okay. Alt 5. Oh, it can't connect to the display anyway. Um, okay, let me try running it as the ordinary user. I'm not sure if this will work. Oh, it is working, okay. Uh, that's unusual. Uh, I'm not sure why it's working for the Myth TV user. It could be that setting up as a system user is the wrong thing. Um, okay, so here's the main menu of Myth TV. Myth, uh, the media library is where all the recordings will appear. You can set a path and place um, other videos in different formats into the directory structure. Uh, so that, that so you need to set up a path for that uh, and images as well. There's a good menu here with system status, so it's got things like the um, various information about listings, the schedules. So there's no schedules set up yet, obviously, because I haven't set that up. Um, it lists the status of the inputs. You can see both are available because there's nothing scheduled and nothing being watched. The job queues where, um, as it says, things are some, such as advert detections get run or transcoding. Video decoders, it shows you what's available. It tells you some information about the display, the rendering platform, and the machine status, which can be useful for seeing how much space is left for recording. Um, as you can see, there's only a total of 31 gigabytes. Now what I should do actually is I'll exit this, become root and if you remember right back at the beginning I'd set up a partition for the recordings, this SDA4. So what I need to do is to actually manage that now. So if I do edit FS tab, I need to add that in now. And there it is. I've already already configured it actually. And I've set it to var db, but let me set it to what I have decided to set it to, which is var Miss TV um, insert forward slash recordings. So if I save that now and do mount minus A, DF minus H, you can see it's mounted it on that place where the recordings are. So if I go back now, restart the front end, go back into the information center, system status, go to the machine status. Okay, that isn't updated yet. It might take a while. Or it might actually, I might need to restart the um, myth backend. So PNS minus A. 
separate myth. Yep, so I'll have to kill this to four. There's the root. Okay, so that's gone. So I'll restart the Okay, I forgot Linux from scratch doesn't re remember root stuff, so I'll have to type it manually again. Opt myth tv bin myth backend minus d log path from slash far log myth tv. Sorry, it's myth tv, isn't it? Log user. This TV. So now if I restart the front end, go to the information center. Yep, that's better. So the back end was still looking at the old partition, and obviously I'd overlaid that with the mounted partition. So you can see that's yeah, 33 gig use, and I'm, I'm not sure what's on there, but um, you can see that's ready to use. Um, so now I need to um, go back. Yeah, auto expire list is for when recordings are auto expired. Um, either because the disk has run out of space or they've been deleted manually and then they'll get removed from the the disk itself um, at an appropriate time. Um, optical disk is where you can play the media and the archive files is where you archive recordings. So I'll show you that in a moment. Watch TV is where you can watch live programs. So if I press enter, for some reason it hasn't gone in. Right, okay, I'm not sure why that is not working. Is that because I'm not the Miss TV user? Um, okay, what I might do is delete the I'm not sure which one of these to use. All right, there isn't a Dell user. So use a Dell. And it's going to be Myth TV. Oh, I see. So the, yeah, I understand that now. So Myth TV is running the back end, even though we started with the root. Okay. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is to kill that. Delete user myth TV, then user add um, going to create a home for it this time rather than a system. Account and um, going to Adding groups, supplementary groups of audio and video and it's going to be called Myth TV. 
And I'm not going to set the password as I said before. I don't really want to log in directly to it. Okay. Yeah, it's because I'm logged in as root, uh, my normal user. So what I'm going to do is to come out, go to root, su to myth tv, start x there, and try myth front end from there. Yep, that's working now. So uh, it looked like it couldn't. Okay, and the back end's not running. So I'll exit, become the root. So it does seem to be that Myth TV doesn't can't be a system user for this setup the way I've built it. So. Opt. In fact, I should be able to run just myth backend. It's in the path, yep. Minus D, log path, full slash far, full slash far, myth TV, log user, myth TV. Now if I run the front end, yep, that's worked fine. So now let's try watching TV. Okay, not sure what's going on there. I know why. It will be because the recordings folder has not got the right permissions. So it's become root again. Oh, not with this one. Not sure what's happened there. Didn't expect that to work. Um, anyway, uh, so ls myself slash far slash myth tv uh, recordings. Yeah, it's gone to root because I've mounted a new partition, so I need to change the. Oh, it looks like I need to change the log as well because I've deleted the myth tv user and recreated it. So. Um, Let's run slash far. Yep, so chown myth TV video minus R four slash far four slash myth TV. That should give the right permissions on everything there. That looks better. So uh, myth front end again. Let's try watching TV again. This time it should work. Yep. 
and we've got to select the correct. So you can see there's some TV going on behind. What we've got to do is to select the correct audio. So what we can do is go down to setup and there's loads of audio options. You just have to try the correct one and find out what works. And it's told me that ALSA default's not working. So let's try pulse. Let's do a rescan. Yep, that's still there. ALSA pulse, save and exit. Go back to watch TV. Now some, depending on what audio source you pick, some work with the volume control and others don't, they're fixed. So it depends on what you find useful, whether you want to control the volume with the keyboard, or sorry, or the remote control, or if you just want to use your TV or whatever display system you're using has the main volume control. So in this particular case, the pulse is not controllable by the uh, keyboard or the remote control. Um, I can actually hear the audio. Um, it's not going to come over the recording, unfortunately. But what I'll have to do is choose something else if I wanted to adjust the audio setting to choose another another one of those audio settings. Also, another thing I've noticed is the um, video. I'm not sure if it's coming across on the recording, but the video is a little bit jittery, so it shows that I've got the wrong or the non-accelerated um, video option. So I'm going to go back to setup video and try another option. So I think it's under playback advanced. Yeah, this here decoder device for the VA API hardware decoding. Uh, no, sorry, it's not that one actually. Big pardon. Um, it's where is it? Playback video. It's under general. I'm sure, it's under playback. General playback. Advanced playback. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's this one here, the playback profile. Right. Let's start again. Go back to the top. So set up. It's video, playback, and then um, current video playback profile. So for some reason, it's set to the NVIDIA. Um, I'll try. I think the OpenGL is a good one to go for. That will use the MISA, which is accelerated. It will use the VA API. Um, so that should be okay. Save and exit. Go back to watch TV. And now that probably would have looked all right on a standard definition. Yeah, that's a lot smoother now. So that's the correct setting. Um, we can press S here to look at the um, schedules and pick another channel. So for example, I'll go to this ITV1, which is not an HD channel. And you can probably see there's a bit more pixelated that that image. Um, so we'll find yeah, there's a an HD channel, another HD channel here, and you can see that looks a, a lot crisper that picture, and a lot. I hope I'm not sure if it will come over the video, but it's a lot smoother. Uh, so yeah, that's basically Myth TV. Um, you can manage recordings from here, schedule recordings, go to the program guide. And for example, if I wanted to record, um, let's find something that is due to record. There isn't anything all midway through the um, recordings. But what I'll do, for example, if I wanted to record that, you can press enter and you can either record this single showing or record all showings or record one show in this episode, or record all showings on this channel, and so on. And you can even edit the recording rule to fine-tune it. So if I just want to record this showing, you can see it's got an S there. It will come up with an A um, if it was to set to record every single episode. 
Um, also, when you're watching live TV, if, for example, I decided oh, I want to record this to watch it another time, you can press R to record it, and it will be recording what we're watching. Um, so I can go to Media Library and watch recordings, and you can see what I was just watching is actually being recorded. And I can press enter there and start watching it. And it remembers where I lost went to. You can use the arrows to skip backwards and forwards as if it were a live um, broadcast. If I go back to watch TV, because that's now occupied one of the inputs, um, it's trying to use another input now because I haven't got another transponder plugged into that input that's why it's come up with no lock because one's occupied so what I can do is go to the press M to get the menu go to the source press right arrow yeah jump to program and I can jump to the one that's being recorded should go there, it's not actually going to it for some reason. I'm not sure why that's not jumping to that. Get to live TV. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but from the media library, as I said, you can watch it. I can see it's recorded two minutes now. Um, I can go to the manage recordings, see what's coming up to record. And you can see I've already set celebrity catchphrase to record. I can actually stop this recording from here if I wanted to. So that's gone red now because it, it's effectively failed the recording. I go to Media Library, you can see it's still there. I've watched 63% of what's been watched. So this should start up. There it goes. And as you see, if it comes to the end, it will just stop and it stays there. And when I've done that, I can press D to delete it. I can ask it to re-record. So for example, if it's recorded part of a recording, um, you can delete it and allow it to re-record or delete it and it disappears. And that will now automatically get deleted. And we can watch that happening in the information center the auto expire list so you can see all the live recordings are there and somewhere it'll probably be that one there um, these are all de delete I think the live recordings delete after or within 24 hours and the ones that have been deleted programs will delete quite quickly um, but yeah, certainly with, it's probably not working because I haven't got another tuner plugged in. Um, but normally what happens when you select source and switch input, oh yeah, switch input hasn't come up. Yeah, input two is the one that I can't use. So because the other one was recording, that's why I couldn't switch. And because the other input didn't have a signal, that's why it was getting stuck. But now because I'm on a tuner that's got a signal, it's allowing me to switch to the other input. I'm not going to do that obviously because... There's no signal on that one. But from here, as you can see, we can uh, change channel to any of the other channels. Um, and that's it, really. 
So, um, as you see, it's quite a, a difficult thing to set up, but uh, it's certainly working. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed the videos, and if you have done, found them useful, uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to find out more of my videos that I'll be doing. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.